Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers public forums, resisting, and trespassing, and is brought to us by Amagansett Press's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 24th, 2020, photojournalist and activist Jason Gutterman, along with his teenage son Benjamin Gutterman, were traveling through the town of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, when they decided to conduct a First Amendment audit on the local state liquor store. The duo stood on the sidewalk outside of the liquor store store and filmed citizens as they entered and exited the store. After apparent customer complaints, an employee of the liquor store asked Mr. Gutterman to leave the premises, advising that he could film from the parking lot but not on store property. Mr. Gutterman claimed that he was an investigative journalist, and the employee threatened to call the police if he did not move or show his credentials. The Guttermans did neither, but when Officer Ashley Kayafa of the Coeur d'Alene Police Department arrived on the scene, they stepped into the parking lot to meet her at her vehicle. Do you, would you like these gentlemen to leave your... Me? Would you like them? Are they good out here or do you want them to leave? Uh, we do want them to leave. They're standing here. They're filming the customers for... Okay. So you want them to trespass? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Well, you yep. can, you know, nobody, first of all... Do you have uh, ID on you? First of all, let me have a conversation with you. I was Sunshine. not asked... Great. Can I get a cover? I was not asked to leave. Okay. Okay. I'm standing out here on public property. Okay. okay. I, this is not private property. Uh, I understand, but he doesn't want to go to the liquor store, so you could stay in the, in the parking lot. You just can't go on the side of the road. I didn't go... I'm standing 20 feet back Do you have ID door, on you? So, of course I have idea. Okay. I have to trespass you, so I need to formally well, get you, your ID. What are you trespassing me for? I didn't commit a crime. I have to put it in our system, so I have to ID you. No, that's not the way it works. Okay. You better call a supervisor. It's not the way okay. it works. I'm standing I, on I don't want you get. I don't want to get arrested for disorderly or anything. There's no disorderly. Okay. I'm having a civil conversation you? with you. Listen to me. I okay? I'm totally standing, haven't done. I'm standing on public property. I understand. Okay? And I'm not breaking the law. But they want you trespass from their store, so I they, need to they, ID They can you. only have me trespass. I didn't okay. go in the store. And a matter of fact, I'm, where does the, where's, where's their property ID? line? Where's the property line? As far as I'm concerned, I'm not on their property anymore. I'm here well, talking you were, to you. Right, and I saw you right, on so, it. Well, if I left, so, I left. I know. So I need to, I, they want you formally trespassed. So I need your identification. Then I'm not going to get formally trespassed from somewhere I have a right to be. If you're asking me to leave under threat of arrest, then I will leave. But I'm not going to be trespassed from somewhere I have a right to be. They are trespassing you, so I need to get your identification. They're, they can't trespass me. There's no okay. lawful basis to trespass. Me. It's a private property. They are. It's not a private trespass. property. It's owned by the state. Mr. Gutterman claims that he has a right to film at the liquor store because it is public property that is owned by the state. This illustrates a common misconception that exists in the First Amendment auditor community that if the property is owned by the government, it must always be held open to the public for filming and other types of speech and expression. In fact, there's a long line of Supreme Court cases that allows the government to place restrictions on free speech on publicly owned property. As the Supreme Court summarized in the 1987 case of Board of Airport Commissioners versus Jews for Jesus, Inc., quote, In balancing the government's interest in limiting the use of its property against the interests of those who wish to use the property for expressive activity, the court has identified three types of fora, the traditional public forum, the public forum created by government designation, and the non-public forum. The proper First Amendment analysis differs depending on whether the area in question falls in one category rather than another. A public forum is government property that is dedicated to the free exercise of the right to speech and public debate and assembly. This means that, as the Supreme Court explained in the 1992 case of International Society for Krishna Consciousness versus Lee, quote, the government does not create a public forum by inaction, nor is a public forum created whenever members of the public are permitted freely to visit a place owned or operated by the government. The decision to create a public forum must instead be made by intentionally opening a non-traditional forum for public discourse. Similarly, in the 1976 case of Greer v. Spock, the Supreme Court overturned a lower court's decision because it was based on the mistaken understanding that whenever members of the public are permitted to freely visit a place owned or operated by the government, then that place becomes a public forum for purposes of the First Amendment. The court held that, quote, such a principle of constitutional law has never existed and does not exist now. The guarantees of the First Amendment have never meant that people who want to propagandize protests or views have a constitutional right to do so whenever and however and wherever they please. The state, no less than a private owner of property, has power to preserve the property under its control for the use to which it is lawfully dedicated. Given the extensive precedent on this subject, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that a state-run liquor store, which exists for the purpose of selling distilled spirits to Idaho residents, is a non-public forum that is subject to reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions on speech. 
However, as we will discuss later in this episode, this does not necessarily mean that Mr. Gutterman would constitutionally be required to leave the property for filming. Okay. Do you have ID on you, or are you just going to do the same thing that he's doing? I don't have ID on okay. I'd like to speak to a supervisor, actually. Okay. Yeah, me too. Are you going to get a supervisor for me? I'm getting whoever's coming down. Okay. And I wish we could have had a more cordial conversation. You don't seem interested in that. Well, I, I've asked you for your ID several times. I'm being very... Is that a very... lawful request? Yes, it is a lawful request. How do you feel that's a lawful request? It's really not. Because a private... Their, their it's business not a private can, business. Their business wants to trespass you. I have to get your I name. already left. Okay. They can't I, have to, I have to identify you at first. So no, that's, that's not totally the way it fine. works. You're not getting my ID. So <laughs> get a supervisor around here. That's not the way it's happening. If I don't give it to you, what's going to happen? Dude, I, I told you right now, that's what I'm asking you to do. They want you formally trespass from their store. They. How are you? Howdy. Good. How are we doing? Pretty good. Good. Can I just ask? No, you you're talking to her. I'm speaking to. You're talking to her. Okay. Can I please well, have your she's ID? She's refusing to answer my question. You're talking to her. Can I please have your ID? I will give you my ID if you're threatening me with arrest. I told you exactly what's happening. If you cannot do it, it's a resisting charge. Can I okay. Well, if your you're ID? telling me, so you're telling me you're going to arrest me if I don't give you my ID. Yeah, correct? she's telling you she doesn't want to charge you with trespassing and obstructing. So if I don't give you, you my trespass. ID, I will be arrested. You will. You just earned yourself a lawsuit. Happy okay. day. Good, Good for, for you, because I don't think you understand the law. The officers informed Mr. Gutterman that he could be arrested for resisting for refusing to provide his ID. Unlike many states, Idaho does not have a stop an ID statute that requires individuals to identify themselves to officers in certain circumstances. Section 18-705 of the Idaho Code defines the crime of resisting and obstructing officers as, quote, willfully resisting, delaying, or obstructing any public officer in the discharge or attempt to discharge of any duty of his office. However, the issue of whether an individual can be arrested under this statute for refusing to identify themselves when their name is essential for an officer to carry out their duties is unsettled. In the 2004 case of High Bull v. 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, the Supreme Court held that, quote, a state law requiring a suspect to disclose his name in the course of a valid Terry stop is consistent with Fourth Amendment prohibitions against unreasonable searches and seizures. Still, in the 2017 case of Moreno v. Idaho, the U.S. District Court in Idaho held that despite Heibel, quote, an individual's refusal to answer an officer's questions or volunteer helpful information cannot be the basis of a charge of obstruction. While the court did acknowledge the Heibel decision, it explained that, quote, Heibel does not stand for the proposition that a detainee may be required to respond to further questioning. Indeed, the Supreme Court rested its decision on the narrow scope of the state stop and identify statute at issue, finding that disclosing a name is likely to be incriminating only in unusual circumstances. The court also noted that, quote, the source of the obligation in Heibel was Nevada's stop and identify statute, which required a person detained by an officer during an investigative stop to identify himself or herself. Idaho has no stop and identify law. While this language seems conclusive, it's important to note the Moreno case involved a resisting charge against an individual who refused to answer substantive questions, not who simply refused to identify themselves. Additionally, previous Idaho case law that held that it is unconstitutional to arrest an individual under this statute for refusing to identify themselves predates Heibel and is no longer valid law. Therefore, while it is probable that a court would conclude that Mr. Gutterman could not be charged with resisting for refusing to identify himself, it is still possible that a court could determine Determined that an arrest would be authorized under the principles announced in the Heibel decision. Oh, you don't. So listen, they want you trespassed, right? I just gave her my ID. And well, no, story. listen, they want you trespassed, right? They have no lawful reason to ask me to be trespassed. But they do. It's, it's their business. There's no correct? lawful reason. This is state property. It's I'm their... standing here taking pictures. You're going to arrest me for taking photographs in public? No. Listen, yes. it's, it's their business, right? So they want you trespass meaning you can't come in that's fine trespass right? but you just earned yourself a lawsuit no that's they want you trespass yeah, you're right gonna, well you guys are the ones demanding my id under threat of arrest so well we we I'm facilitate it right well, now so I'm you just facilitated a lawsuit against Coeur d'Alene and i'm gonna win and that's the way that goes and i'm gonna name you personally and you're i'm informing you right now that you're violating my rights okay and i'm also informing you that you're violating my rights so you're aware of that uh, 11, 12, I don't think you understand the right. rights oh, as understand. the business, right? You don't know who I am. This is not a business. This is a, pub this is a pri uh, public yep. entity. It's so you're saying they don't have the right to kick out people who are Only being disrupted? Only if I'm violating the law. I was not being disruptive. I was standing 20, 30 feet away from the doorway. Well, I don't know what you were doing, but right. they want you trespassed. Well, why would you accuse me of being disruptive if you don't know what I was doing? Because it's all on two cameras. Because they want you trespassed, right? Well, they could want me sent so, to Mars. You're going to do that too? You have to follow the law, buddy. That's the way it works. Okay. The only way you could trespass me off of public property is if I've committed a crime. 
You cannot trespass someone from public property when they have committed no crime. That's the way that works. You're going to learn the law today. You're making okay. a mistake. Mr. Gutterman argues that he cannot be trespassed from public property unless he has committed a crime. Yet, under Section 18-7008 of the Idaho Code, quote, a person commits criminal trespass and is guilty of a misdemeanor when he enters or remains on the real property of another without permission, knowing or with reason to know that his presence is not permitted. A person has reason to know his presence is not permitted when he fails to depart immediately from the real property of another after being notified by the owner or his agent to do so, or he returns without permission or invitation within one year, unless a longer period of time is designated by the owner or his agent. When evaluating a similar previous version of the statute, which included within the definition of a trespasser, quote, every person who, being first notified in writing or verbally by the owner or authorized agent of the owner of real property, to immediately depart from the same and who refuses to so depart, or who, without permission or invitation, returns and enters said property within a year, after being so notified, the Idaho Supreme Court concluded in the 2003 case of State v. Corson that, quote, There is no ambiguity in the language of the statute, whose terms are to be given their commonly understood everyday meanings. The statute makes no distinctions between private and public property. However, the court also concluded that, quote, Assuming that a criminal trespass prosecution is filed against a person on public property who is exercising his or her free speech rights, the statute could be attacked as applied to that constitutionally protected conduct. The court did not detail the circumstances under which such a challenge would likely be successful, but it did clarify that, quote, the statute is capable of constitutional application to government-owned non-public forums, such as government office buildings or portions of college campuses that, unlike traditional public forums, such as a public street, public park, or sidewalk, or the steps of the state capitol building, are not open to the public for expressive activities. Additionally, the court explained that, quote, physical presence in a public building dedicated to public uses other than that of a public thoroughfare thoroughfare, even presence for the purpose of communicating ideas, is not pure speech. Not all conduct claimed to have communicative purpose is protected as speech by the First Amendment. With these principles in mind, it is certainly possible that Mr. Gutterman could challenge an arrest for trespassing as a violation of his First Amendment rights, especially if the liquor store did not have a policy prohibiting filming or had previously allowed other individuals to film outside the building. However, because the store is a non-public forum, the state is entitled to enact reasonable time place and manner restrictions, as long as they do not target a certain viewpoint. Courts have not fully fleshed out the intricacies of public forum laws as they apply to filming, and it'll be interesting to see how these issues will be resolved as time goes on. If I stand outside, if, minding my own business, not talking to anybody, taking pictures... So, in your scenario, you were on the sidewalk... That's correct. Taking video. On public property. Taking video of on, people coming... On public okay. property. State, Constitutionally state property. protected activity. State property is public property, that's correct. And you're taking video of people coming in and out. Absolutely. And some guy comes out and says, what are you doing? And, and you say, I'm, I'm, I'm just videotaping well, things. Somebody asked me what I was doing and I said, I'm in the middle of what I'm doing. I would rather not have a discussion, thank you. Okay. That's exactly what I said. And then he said he wants you and off then the he sidewalk. Got his car and left. No, this guy came, no, 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 no. You're talking about six different things. You made a, you're making a mistake and I would remedy okay. it as well, quickly as possible. Fine. Are we done? Yep, we're done. All right. Eventually, the officers left the scene without arresting Mr. Gutterman or issuing him a formal trespass notice. After the officers drove away, the Guttermans visited the police station to file a complaint. The lobby was closed, but Mr. Gutterman was able to contact a supervisor by phone. Mr. Gutterman also indicated that he would be pursuing a lawsuit against the police department and potentially the liquor store. Overall, the Coeur d'Alene officers get a C. Because while they maintained cordial and professional demeanors throughout the encounter, they likely threatened to arrest Mr. Gutterman without the legal basis to do so, and left the scene without resolving the situation or communicating to Mr. Gutterman whether he had been trespassed or if he was free to go. That being said, it's certainly understandable why the officers believe that Mr. Gutterman could be arrested for resisting, for refusing to identify himself, given the language of the statute, the unclear state of the law in Idaho, and the fact that his name was needed to complete the trespass report. It may even be possible that they'd been trained to consider such a refusal to be a violation of the resisting statute. As Pocatello, Idaho Police Chief Scott Marchand indicated in a 2017 interview about the arrest of another First Amendment auditor in a similar situation, that in some circumstances, officers can arrest someone for refusing to provide identification, such as a driver's license. This interaction highlights the challenges that police officers face when confronted with unclear or uncertain legal precedents, and the importance of training officers on the constitutional rights of citizens.
Mr. Gutterman gets a B, because although he maintained a calm, albeit antagonistic demeanor throughout the interaction, exercised his right to refuse to identify himself, and immediately filed a complaint after the incident, he demonstrated a fundamental misunderstanding of how the First Amendment applies on public property. While there's not enough information available to determine whether the liquor store employees could prohibit the Guttermans from filming and trespass them from the property in this situation, the law is certainly not as black and white as Mr. Gutterman suggests, and there are arguably in instances where individuals do not have the freedom to film or participate in other methods of speech on public property. As we've discussed before on ATA, the Supreme Court's view of the First Amendment's protections is much more limited than many citizens believe it to be. And regardless of my personal opinion on the matter, the mission of ATA is to educate citizens on how the judicial system applies the law, not how I believe that they should. While I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Gutterman and his commitment to constitutional activism, I believe that it is vital that citizens understand that the fact that property is owned by the government does not mean that free speech cannot be restricted there. And I strongly recommend that all citizens familiarize themselves with the limitations that are placed on the First Amendment. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.